Thank you for joining us on American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Bromell, joined by Ethan Euchre. Happy to be here. And also happy to be here is Jeff Wagstaff. I'm absolutely ecstatic <laughs> to be here. And we have world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Benatti of the Benatti Spine Institute. We're going <laughs> to talk cancer research. Joining us right now is Dr. Matthew Godovin, a biology professor at the University of Texas at San Antonio, where he has developed a newly patented non-invasive method to kill cancer cells. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Godovin. Thank you so much for having me. Now, this oh, is interesting. These, it is. This These sound fantastic. Did you see this, Doc? It's actually, yeah. I saw I a it. video well, that Kimberly had sent me, <laughs> uh-huh. and it's pretty amazing it's research. Astounding. Yeah. Yeah, you actually uh, inject, inject a chemical called, and I have to look at it because it's uh-huh. called nitrobenzaldehyde. Nitrobenzaldehyde. Yep. You Tell us all about it. You put it mm-hmm. in a tumor, shine a light on it, go from there. I've been here 20 years at UT San Antonio, and I uh, was uh, trained as a neurobiologist and was trying to find a way to make cells acidic on the just the inside of the cell. It's not a cancer biologist. I, I may still not be, but um, <laughs> nitrobenzaldehyde will enter cells. You can inject it into an area and it'll pass through the cell membrane and kind of okay. get trapped in there. And then when you shine a certain wavelength of light onto that compound, so in a tumor, the nitrobenzaldehyde creates a highly acidic environment inside those cells. And so developing a rapid, very targeted focal intracellular acidosis overwhelms all cells. And we first mm-hmm. killed non-cancerous cells. So the mechanism of death that these cells undergo is a cell suicide called apoptosis. And so we're able to just initiate that and trigger that in a really straightforward, simple way. I always heard cancer cells thrive in an, an acidic in an acid. environment. Yeah. What the cancer cells do, so we want to look at the inside of the cancer and the extracellular environment. What the cancer cells do is they actually make a slightly acidic environment outside their tumor. Okay. Right? So it's like a shield? What it does is it extracellular acidity activates some compounds that will make blood vessels grow towards the tumor to remove Mm -hmm. this acid. And so the aggressive nature of it is then the tumors latch onto those blood vessels. So there are some known treatments that block the growth of blood vessels because that's what these tumors are doing. They're very sneaky. So they'll create an acidic extracellular environment knowing that they're going to manipulate the vasculature to grow there in a sort of a honest attempt to remove the acid. And then the tumor latches on and it gets all these extra nutrients. The inside of the tumors are actually slightly alkaline because they're giving their acid to the outside space. But intracellular acidosis has been achieved with some chemotherapeutics. And so the mechanisms and the pathways are fairly known. And I was trying to figure out if there was any other application to my research Mm -hmm. and started reading some of the cancer cancer journals that said there are currently no ways to cause a, a focal acidosis inside a cancer cell. And if someone could figure that out, it could be a big event. And how long did it take you to come up with that idea to inject straight into the cancer cells? Everything that we do first in a Petri dish. And so we've killed two forms of breast cancer, including triple negative breast cancer. Which is a very aggressive yeah. form, right? That's very hard to treat. Very, very poor prognosis because of the lack of surface receptors. I can tell your audience that today, in about 30 minutes, we're going to take our first attempt at killing a pancreatic cancer cell line. So I have a team of about 18 students. These are all graduate and undergraduate students at UT San Antonio. Mm-hmm. They all have courses. Some of them have other jobs. I try to support them in the lab positions, but they work around the clock, literally. What I love about what you developed is the fact that you're not killing good cells. You're only attacking the bad cells. And it's not invasive now, yes. right? The most invasive nature is sticking somebody with a needle. It's very difficult to get something in a Petri dish that works to work in an animal model. That's a huge failure right there for lots of reasons. So we gave mice triple negative breast cancer tumors on their mammary fat pad. They have like a little pectoralis muscle there. So we gave them human triple negative breast cancer and we waited till the tumors reached a certain size, about the size of a Tic Tac. And then we did our treatment. We gave a one injection of the compound followed by a fiber optic light that was pushed into the tumor while the mouse was anesthetized. It was two and a half minutes of exposure to the light. And then we stopped and watched what happened. And in our experiment with just one treatment, we saw a reduction in the tumor growth and more than doubled the life expectancy and the lifespan of the animal. The treatment was a one-time dose, and it was to demonstrate what we call proof of concept for our patent. Some of the tumors shrank. Some of them didn't grow. The control animals, the tumors grew like crazy. You all said it was one of the most aggressive cancers that we know of. The one-time treatment reduced the growth rate for about two weeks, and then the tumor started growing again. We've done multiple treatment experiments that we haven't finished yet, where we will give one of these treatments every four or five days. In the few animals we've done, we don't see the tumors growing. So you're telling me that this is going to probably um, replace chemotherapy and or radiotherapy? 
That's I, that's a, that's your direction. That's where you're thinking. Well, I think that what we may have developed is a treatment that could be an option for patients that can't have the standard of care. If you have a non-metastasized breast tumor, I would recommend a surgeon cut it out. You could shrink this tumor mm -hmm. with this technique prior to a surgeon cutting it out. Sometimes, if tumors are large, they'll do chemo or radiation to shrink it prior to resection. Yeah, but you are you are obtaining the results that you are hoping with chemotherapy and radiotherapy, and then. And, and then when you reduce the size of the tumor to a level that surgically can be removed, that's what, that's what they are also hoping with the other technique. But this one is practically something that you do in a matter of hours. Yeah. In the Petri dish, we watch mm -hmm. the cells die in about two hours, yeah. 95 wow. to 100% of the cells. Oh, that's yes. unbelievable. There's a, layer, there's a layer of selectivity. So we did these studies too. The compound by itself does nothing to harm the cancer cells. If it's just the compound, mm -hmm. they grow, they thrive, their pH is the okay. same. The light by itself, even though you hear UV light can cause damage, mm -hmm. the low intensity and short duration of the UV light doesn't damage the DNA. So these two things by themselves do nothing. It's only in areas where, as you said, Kimberly, where they're combined, where you have a selectivity of the compound compound must be there. If a physician injected the compound into a tumor and some of it leaked out into a non-tumorous part mm -hmm. Nothing of the happened. tissue, it'll happen. We're not going to shine the light there. What's great is you don't have the side effects that one would normally get from a chemo. You're not going to lose yeah, your hair. Yeah. You're not going to have those negative effects mm -hmm. that make somebody feel worse. Why are you applying uh, the 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 acidity only? Uh, do you ever experiment with the alkaline? No. Because no. they say that alkaline will practically uh, med alkaline media will uh, will remove the tumor, will control the tumor. Yeah, I think that there's two approaches, and we we were actually just asked to participate in a in a review journal for sort of this re-examining the look of pH in cancer biology. All right. So whether it's highly acidic or highly alkaline, and, and your listeners probably have heard of some of these alkalinizing mm -hmm. diets where folks yes. will try to eat foods that mm -hmm. make their pH a little higher and more right. alkaline. Try to drink kombucha teas yeah. and different and things like that, right? Yeah, and it's difficult to show evidence of that stuff working because mm -hmm. there's so many other factors that aren't controlled. It's sort of an anecdotal How scenario. But for years prior to this, mm -hmm. I was focused on studying acid challenges to brain stem cells and neurons sure. and so and in the, the patent that we submitted that we had our first favorable review mm -hmm. I included three of my students Brian O'Grady who's at Vanderbilt and Haley Hazlitt is at Dartmouth and Elma Frias was a summer student so I worked with three students and we didn't sleep we stayed here overnight we were just so excited to see if this would work and so it's all about causing an acidosis now I can tell you that the normal pH of a cell is about 7.5 <laughs> something like sulfuric acid is down in, in, in very very, very low numbers. We can make the cells so acidic that everything stops. So there's sort of a desirable amount of acidosis. You want to have it strong enough so mm -hmm. the cell is overwhelmed, but not so strong that the cell doesn't know to commit the suicide. Got it. Okay, so, so there, there's a fine line in that. Unfortunately, uh, Dr. Matthew Gadovin, we're almost out of time, but um, such an important subject. Thank you so much for your advancement um, against uh, killing cancer. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, for your interest. So we're, we're very excited. Yeah, we need to, we you, need to get you again because this can, information is unbelievable. We, I, we would like to know what happened with the experiment that yes. you're doing today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, we'll and back just, on. just quickly, do you have any idea um, years down decades that this will be okay for use on human trials? I've been meeting with different business leaders in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. To accelerate, the first step is to do all the experiments to get FDA approval. So we're Got aware it. of those experiments. Sure. We know what we need to do to get the FDA approval. We're looking for some grants to fund that right now. So i got if, the support of my university. And, okay. And if they need to get in touch with you, is there a phone number that they can call or an email? My email is matthew.gadovin, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, dot G-D-O-V-I-N, at U-T-S-A. Edu. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Matthew Godovan, biology professor at the University of Texas and San Antonio, where he developed a newly patented non-invasive method to kill cancer cells. Thank you very much for joining us on American Medicine Today. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot, doctor.